Nancy and John Frades were just starting to settle into their empty nest in Beverly when their world turned completely upside down. We get this diagnosis, they tell us no treatment, no cure, 100% fatal, two to five years. Their middle child, Pete, just 27 years old at the time, had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, more commonly known as ALS. Two days after Pete was diagnosed, my sister and my brother-in-law were at our house, signed these papers. And we're like, what do you mean, sign these papers? They said, we're opening up a trust for Pete. Little did I know that my brother-in-law had lost a co-worker, 47 years old, to ALS, four months before Pete was diagnosed. And little did she know at the time, creating a trust for Pete would set up a crucial financial foundation that would help support the family in the years to come. I think that's one of the most important types of advice that we can give to families. If you have an individual whose ability to produce their own income and take care of themselves and they're going to require public benefits is to always have money go into a trust. Attorney Neil Winston has been practicing public benefits law for 30 years and has a practice in Somerville. A lot of times the, there's just not enough resources to get through their whole life. So it's a combination of trust and public benefits that helps the individual uh, get from here to there. We were very lucky because we had people in our lives that knew what was going to happen. So we literally started fundraising for Pete's caregiving like two weeks after diagnosis. For the first few years, they didn't use much of the money they were raising. Pete still had private insurance, and John and Pete's brother Andrew were able to take care of him in the Frady's converted garage. Year three, we hired a personal caregiver but it was minimal cost because it was just the strength to transition him in and out of bed wherever we had to go for an event. But shortly thereafter, Pete's condition deteriorated and he needed a much more intense level of care. If you choose not to go on the ventilator, you probably only have four to six months left. And Pete was 30 years old. He and Julie had gotten married and Julie was pregnant. So he, of course, I want to live. I'm not going anywhere. Pete's will to live was resilient, as was his family's support. But Nancy says not all ALS patients make that same choice. They were telling Pete what the process was and how it was going to be a game changer for him. But now we're being pulled over here to people who wanted to tell us, you understand once this happens, you're gonna probably be in the 250 to $300,000 a year home health care bill because insurance is not gonna pay for the home health care. In my eight years of being immersed in the community, I can tell you that more ALS patients than not choose not to go on a ventilator. People are choosing to die rather than put their family in that kind of financial situation. For many families, that cost is simply too much to bear. For the Fradies, even the money they'd been raising and saving for years wasn't enough. I used to make jokes, John and I are going to be 95 years old, pushing carts in the parking lot at Shaw's to pay off this debt. But we also had a partner in that. We had a nursing company, Advantage Nursing, out of Needham, who showed up every day even though we couldn't meet the bills. Never wavered on us. And we would have an event and we would throw them some money and they were like, okay, you know, keep it going. The caretaking team that they had built also had to travel with Pete to the fundraisers, events, and outings. On Facebook, it looks wonderful. Mm. We just show up, we're living with ALS. It's nothing like that. It would take two days of advanced planning. We needed an extra set of hands, but of course, that extra nurse couldn't just come for a couple hours. They would have to come for the shift. So now we have double billed. But again, those trips, the baseball game, the experience are so wonderful and was such a highlight. And Pete wasn't the only member of the family John and Nancy were helping to take care of. Unfortunately, we lost John's dad eight weeks after Pete passed away, and my dad's been dealing with dementia issues. So being the sandwich generation, I was taking care of my son, worrying about what was going on in this house, and I said to them, you are, you're in your late 80s. 
okay? I need you to be safe. I can't be worrying about you. Despite all that worry, the financial impact, and the heartbreaking loss, there's only one thing they wish they could have changed. I wouldn't trade one thing that happened other than Pete having ALS, which every day we wished and hoped. And, and eventually a realization happened that Pete was not gonna beat this disease. But the beauty that we saw in people, and especially these, these nurses, is everything for us. And the Frady's family has now established a new foundation to help relieve the cost of care for other families caring for a loved one with ALS, a cause they are so passionate about. We'll post a link for more information on our website.